Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in today's video we're looking at learning motion graphics within Blender and in particular a course real-time motion graphics from a professional artist and lecturer called Midge. I'll be reviewing the course for those that are interested in learning about motion graphics and deciding whether it's something you should purchase or not. As always there's an affiliate link but that's just for keeping the channel going, that's not a promotion of the course, it's an honest review and I will tell you the bad points as well as the good points. Use the code in the description for 25% off and that's available up until the 13th of this month or you can use the general discount code to get 15% off. So what's the course about? Well the genre of motion graphics in this course are the types of graphics you might see in adverts or in concert backgrounds, maybe music videos that are very abstract and it's procedurally based which I'll talk about in a moment. They look good, very stylish and the approach taken in the course is very comprehensive and detailed. There are 11 hours in total and you could argue this is short for a course of this price range which is currently just under $40 but it's very compact and fast paced so you definitely get your money's worth in my opinion. You'll need a reasonable computer system to run the types of workflow shown within the course. I think the lecturer is using a laptop with an RTX 2070, so that should give you some idea. And as you'd expect, the Blender files and project files are offered with the course. So who is the course for? Now it's very important to say that this is definitely not for a beginner and you have to be very comfortable with Blender before jumping in. There's a lot of assumed knowledge, there's little in the way of hand holding. You could even argue that it's more for intermediate to advanced users looking to discover new ways of working within Blender. Maybe those that have been using Blender for a while and want to get into motion graphics or people that are motion graphics artists looking for a new direction in their work. Or generally those more advanced users looking to develop their skills. So a good understanding of Blender with a reasonable understanding of the modifiers, nodes, the basics of animation is all important. So for example, if you don't know what a keyframe is, you're not really ready for this course. So what kind of approach can you expect? Well, like I say, it's a procedural approach where you start off with a very basic object, so little in the way of modeling, and you build up with modifiers, stacking them one after another to add and distort to manipulate the starting mesh. There's a lot of advantages to this approach and it certainly makes a lot of sense. You can easily adapt and make changes, particularly important for client work as it's really quick to build very complex meshes and adapt them easily. This approach also makes it easy to animate and offers a lot of variation to play with. So it's definitely worth learning about for all kinds of workflows. It's something I haven't done a lot of myself, so I was interested in how it was covered here. I found although I've been using Blender for many years now, it was good to see the different approach, pick up a few new ideas and see someone else's workflow. I definitely learned a few things. So what about the lecturer? Well, they're clear and easy to understand. They do rush at times though. They get very excited about the outcomes, but miss showing the full ins and outs of what's going on. You could argue that they kind of forget about the student. It's definitely tough to follow along with because of the pace. It's more like a demonstration in which you take notes and try it out for yourself later. That's not to say you can't follow along and it's definitely possible, but again, you need to be comfortable and fairly decent at Blender so as not to get lost. Now, some people might like this approach, especially the more advanced users, but it could be argued there's not enough of the why we do things, which I think might be frustrating for some. I feel like this course would be even better if it had just spent a little bit more time on the basic steps just to help those that are at the intermediate level and still discovering some aspects within Blender. So for example, some of the modifiers used, we've got Solidify, Bevel, Subdivision Surface, Decimate. Yes, they're all tools that are regularly used, so it's okay for most, but I think it could have had a small amount of explanation to each of them for those students that have not used them much. The more complex things like vertex weight, edit, mix and proximity, the less used modifiers, he went through in more detail, so hopefully that gives you an idea of the complexity of the course. Another example would be the animation section. There's a general assumption that the student understands keyframes and they go straight into drivers and keyframe modifiers, which are really useful and great, but I think for the more intermediate users, a brief explanation of keyframes would have been a good idea. That's a really nice flag-waving animation, but he bakes the animation without an explanation of what baking is. So again, if you're a user that's not aware, you might be wondering what on earth's going on. And Midge is very fast through the lectures, jumping around the interface, so just be aware of that. On the positive side, it makes the course quick and therefore he packs a lot of stuff into it. 
so it could be a really good thing for people that are fairly competent and understand a lot of aspects within Blender. So what sort of content is there? Well, there's a section on modeling, animation, shaders, rendering, and there's more detailed projects, which are very long lectures towards the end. There are some good fun, nice ideas and creative abstract animations, which look good and there's lots to learn. What about Wingfox as a platform? Well, it's an interesting platform that seems to offer a high caliber level of teaching from professionals rather than just having anybody be able to produce a course. They tend to be people from within the profession. That doesn't always mean the courses are good as they may not be great teachers, but you know at least when you learn from someone in the profession that you are at least learning the right stuff and good workflows generally speaking. The Wingfox platform is a little sluggish unfortunately, something like Udemy is a bit better. Every time I clicked on a video it took around 7 seconds to start. It's not much of a negative point, but I think it's something they need to look into in my opinion. It does remember where you are in the video, so you can stop and come back to it. I'd like to have a little more detail about how much of a lecture I've watched. Again, I think Udemy does this with sort of a green bar, but it's not really a big deal and doesn't put me off. I do quite like the content that's available on the platform, so it's something I'd still want to use. What about updates to the course? Well, it seems it will not be updated, from the information they've given anyway. There are a few places that do offer updates on their courses, so Game Dev TV, who I work with, CG Boost, another one, both of which I would thoroughly recommend. It would be nice to see an update with animation nodes perhaps in the future. It's not common practice that courses offer updates, but it's something that I think with fast advancing programs like Blender, it would be a nice touch. Overall, this is an excellent course. The projects are good and interesting. There's lots of great ideas. It's fast paced, so packed full of useful information. It's got great insights into procedural modeling, materials, animation, rendering. I really enjoyed going through it, learned a few things myself and think it's definitely worth the money. The downside is that it's not for beginners and more for intermediate to advanced users. There's a lot of assumed knowledge and it feels a little bit rushed in places, lacking in some detail about the functions and what they are truly doing and sometimes skipping over bits of knowledge altogether like the keyframes or baking examples that I talked about earlier. This could be seen as a positive if you're looking for something more advanced, but could confuse a few. All in all, I would definitely recommend this course to the intermediate to advanced user as there's a good opportunity to learn a lot from what's on offer. Thanks very much to Wingfox for sending me the course and thanks to you guys for watching. I hope this gave you a good insight into the course and I'll see you next time.